<sighs> I think Sony screwed the pooch, don't you? Um, a lot of uh, news this week, well, uh, over the last month or so, uh, has been this uh, time bomb issue with Sony consoles, uh, PS3, PS4, PS5, and the Vita, and the PSP, where basically if the CMOS, what is known as a CMOS battery, I'll show you what it is, what it looks like, because these are very common in computers. I got a spare one here. This is an Energizer CR2025 Lithium uh, CR3030 uh, 30, uh, 2025. These batteries are very common in uh, computers. Um, motherboard, this is how your motherboard saves the BIOS uh, information over years. Uh, a good battery like this one, uh, lithium, this thing could probably last a good 8 to 10 years. Upward, some of them upward up to 15 to 20, depending on use and quality. Energizers, Duracell, they'll last forever. Unfortunately, a lot of motherboards, most all motherboards for computers are shipped out of Japan and China and Taiwan, and they usually have a battery made by KTS, which is a Korean, uh, a, a Korean company, I believe. Their batteries, their CMOS batteries, last three to five years at most. You will be replacing them if you decide to keep your computer, you know, long uh, for a number of years. <clears throat> but the thing is, the point I want to make is on computers, they're very, they're easy to access, and it only takes a second. You know, it only takes like a few seconds to pop open the computer case, and you know, if you got a laptop, you're in real big trouble. Let's just mention that laptops are different uh, are a different beast. Because there's some teardown, there's a lot more teardown involved. But on the PC side, on a, on a desktop computer, uh, you just got to open the case, unplug everything, you know, throw off the master switch, look for the battery. There's usually a clip. Move that clip and the battery will pop out. You pop the new one in, fire it up, and then you reconfigure your BIOS, your firmware settings, and you can go, you know, boot back into Windows. Consoles are a different story. For some reason, these console makers decided to not make these things accessible and then user replaceable. There's, I mean, it's, they, <laughs> it's weird. It's sad actually because, you know, when you look at a cell phone, you got a cell phone here. Let me unplug mine here. They, uh, you know, cell phones like this Motorola um, cell phone of mine. It has uh, access, you can access the SIM card and uh, SD card very, very easily. But for some reason, gaming console screwed the pooch. They made it hard to, re you know, replace these batteries. Um, I'm trying to remember what I put. I put the, I've only got one here. I'm in pairs of two, and I'm trying to remember. Oh, I know what. Another thing. Another thing that uses uses a CR2032 uh, battery, or 2025, is your uh, soundbar remote. You got a soundbar with this little Bluetooth remote, you'll be replacing the battery in that too. They use them. But anyway, let's uh, talk about this uh, time bomb some more. Um, uh, let me... Uh, Go to YouTube here, so I'm going to shrink myself down and minimize uh, OBS so you can see my desktop. Um, there, uh, all these videos, Sony Time Bomb on YouTube, uh, dime a dozen. There's a lot of them over here. A lot of them uh, discuss the issue, and uh, the solution on Sony's side is actually relatively easy. All they have to do is essentially release a firmware update that disables the CMOS time check. That's all they have to do, especially when the console reaches end of life and is no longer, um, can no longer sync with the PlayStation Network and can no longer grab patches and updates and stuff like that. All they have to do is come out with a firmware 
when uh, these consoles are no more and they're considered end of life and unsupported, Sony should release a firmware update that either disables that time bomb completely in that authentic authentication process or release a firmware that just opens the system wide open. Um, they won't do that. You know, Sony won't do that. If they don't release a firmware that disables this check, then we're going to have a real big problem because then it falls on to the uh, homebrew community, community, which I am a former member of, as I uh, was a former PS2 homebrew developer, and I contributed code, development code, to a uh, application many people use on their PlayStation 2s called Open PS2 Loader. Uh, I did so under the handle Bat Rastered, and uh, I haven't. Con I I pretty much went on retirement about seven years ago. And uh, if if the if the burden falls on us, you know, hackers and stuff like that in the homebrew community, what we would have to do is um, reverse engineer an existing firmware from Sony. To try to uh, uh, do away with this CMOS time sync check, this time bomb, with a either a custom firmware, or uh, uh, if we if we could have a, if, if it happens to a custom firmware, then the ability to do that would have to then be shared with those who develop hybrid firmware. With hybrid firmware for, is basically the same Sony stock firmware with the WebKit exploit reinstalled into the firmware so that other exploits can be used, such as uh, PS3N, PS4N. So that's a possibility. It's gonna pop, if, if Sony doesn't deal with the situation, it's gonna fall on the homebrew community. And if, if that can't be done, and that's actually, that's the easiest solution, is to whip up a custom or hybrid firmware that does away with the check, then what we're going to end up having to do somehow is probably uh, whip up a proxy server or actually incorporate a redirect into the firmware where instead of going to Sony servers, it goes to a proxy server set up by the homebrew community for the authentication and uh, check and security check and stuff like that. We'd have to emulate somehow this server, this uh, this um, logging in uh, process, in order to do away with it. Um, the <laughs> that's that's a lot of work involved. That is a lot of work, a lot of manpower, and and when it comes to feasibility, probably not. I, it's we we may not we might not know how uh, the hardware and Sony servers uh, communicate back and forth. So the best, the best solution, honestly, is for custom and hybrid firmware provided Sony says, you know what? This is end of life, end of life. We don't care. You now are proud owners of pretty much doorstops, a PS3 doorstop, a PS4 doorstop. And uh, judging by how C, uh, Sony's uh, CEO, current CEO, um, talked about backwards compatibility. Uh, I have absolutely con no no confidence that uh, no confidence whatsoever that Sony's going to do anything about this. Um, let me bring back myself here. So yeah, unfortunately, we're um, kind of stuck in a you know a rock in a hard place. We don't know exactly. What's going to happen? Um, we don't know if Sony is going to actually whip up this firmware for these end of life consoles. That's what they should do, honestly. It would be the you know the the right thing to do is to do it officially. That way, you don't have to rely on the homebrew community. We're we're up for the challenge. We always are, and sometimes, well, sometimes we <laughs> more times than not we actually uh, deliver better results than official results but i think this is one of the one of those times where sony should just bite the bullet and say you know we need to either do we, we need to release a firmware fix for this issue 
or uh, a firmware that opens these systems up uh, wide open so you know people can tinker around and and develop for them because there's no sense in I mean if they're end of life and they no longer can uh, log in to uh, PSN then <laughs> they're, they're, I don't I don't see uh, a uh, I don't see an issue where piracy is a concern honestly these consoles are dead nobody's making money off them anymore except uh, those are people on eBay that are selling them. So yeah, either Sony releases an official firmware that disables the time bomb, or it falls on the on the uh, homebrew community through custom and hybrid firmware. And that's uh, that's where it's gonna uh, rest. And the sad thing is, it's been confirmed for the PS3, PS4, the handhelds. And now the PS5 has the same time bomb and the same lack of access to this CMOS battery. Shame. It's shameful. There's, there's, no, re there's no real reason for it. Considering the socket, if you look at some of these videos, the socket that holds the battery is uh, designed to be replaced. It's not like a uh, Dreamcast uh, CMOS where uh, it's hard soldered. And in order to replace that, you got to break out with a uh, soldering iron and gun and wick and everything. But that's where we're, we're at in this situation. And um, hopefully, with any luck, well, it'll, it'll take a miracle. It honestly will take a miracle for Sony to uh, release a firmware that uh, official firmware that does away with this time bomb. Otherwise, like I said, it's going to fall on the homebrew community. And since, you know, that's a, that's a long time coming. I mean, Sony could do it like that within, you know, a week or two, a development and testing. Homebrew community, we could be staring at this for years, unfortunately. Sad but true. Anyway, see you later. Until next time.